So it's really great to be here. My name is Judy Knight, and um, I'm from Atlanta. And I've been the organizer of WordCamp Atlanta for the last four years. And I, too, like David, have turned over the reins to my worthy committee, um, which is kind of, I understand how he felt this morning. It's because WordCamps are, and the whole WordPress community is such, um, such an amazing thing in my life, and I could see in his, that it means a lot to us. So it means a lot to us to be here and for you all to be here, and welcome to, if it, this is your first time in this community, uh, welcome. So I love to do website, <laughs> website critiques. Really, it's because I really love user experience. I say that there's a really big difference between a website that looks good and that's technically put together right, and one that actually works to get you business. And so people get really, uh, they get their, their ideas about how they want a website to be. Yesterday, there was a fella, and he, he and his wife have a business that's actually a, a pretty thriving business. So if he actually had a website that worked, I can't even imagine what it would do. But but his wife wanted it to be, I don't know, is he in here? <laughs> I'm going to talk about him. Um, his wife wanted all these bells and whistles, and they sell books for homeschoolers. And she wanted the book to open and then them to be able to go and do, you know, all of these bells and whistles. And I said, but you know what? I can't even tell what you do on this home page because there are so many moving parts and photos of happy children. And, and so, you know, it's like, but the wife was really holding on to wanting it to be that way. So, you know, that's where it gets a little frustrating because we all have our pet things that we want to, uh, you know, feature that, that it's hard to give those up. But if you've ever done any kind of thing like this, or there's a, there's a website called usertesting.com, and uh, they have a little testing thing where called peak, P-E-E-K, and it might be peak.com, but through them you can do a, a five minute, have somebody evaluate your website for, uh, for five minutes and they'll send you a video of somebody going through your website, and that's a real eye-opener. You'll see in a minute how much that's an eye-opener when, you know, somebody says, yeah, but what do you do? Or, I'm getting seasick. So is your website working for your business? And if not, do you know why not? And people might be whispering behind your back, but don't be frustrated. Get some help. You know, it's like get some people who actually have user experience. Even if you can't afford a fancy designer, somebody will spend an hour or two with you. Um, you can, like with me, I, I'm if people call me so much wanting to pick my brain, I have to charge for that just to make sure they're serious. But I mean, I'll talk to somebody for five or 10 minutes at, while I'm working. But otherwise, it's a $150 talk it out session because it's a consultation. But if I'm at a meetup or a word camp, I'm like, oh, have at it. So go to meetups, you know, go to places where people are or pay for some help because nobody can be an expert in in the um, development, design, marketing, user experience. It's really hard to have all of those things, and it takes all of those things to have a website that works. So I'm going to go over a few things that we're going to be talking about today. You know, on the first page, you really have about five seconds to tell people what your business is. I mean, they, you know, and somebody said yesterday, well, it's all on the about page. I said, nobody's going to go to your about page. If they can't go to your home page and see what you do, then they're going to leave. You have to have a pleasing website design. And it, it, it has to be pleasing to your target audience. It might be pleasing to you. You might like a black website that has, you know, um, fluorescent colors and fancy things, but if that's, if your target market is not that, you know, you're, it's going to be a fail. Um, you have to have a hero, um, I mean, a, some kind of attention-getting hero section with a message on it, but, you know, probably not, I think I might say, sliders, 
not so much. Those are on the outs because if it's hard enough to get one really great hero image, that's why they're called hero images because they're epic, it is really hard to find one 1920 pixel by 800 image that is stellar. And so usually if people have multiple ones, one is probably better than all the rest of them. And nobody is going to sit there and wait for all these sliders to go through. And heaven forbid you actually have a message that you want somebody to read on the third slide. They'll never read it and they'll never take action. So instead of trying to be, throw, every, throw your whole nine yards into the top of your website, pick your best shot and go with that. Because that'll also, your, your website speed will improve immensely. Make sure that your font size and color are readable. If there's a lot of, you know, I don't see as many dark websites with light fonts on them anymore, but I see, you know, right now all the designy ones have um, very gray fonts and it, they're, they're pretty, but, you know, if you want it, somebody to be able to read it from like without going like this to their computer, then make it darker and make it bigger. It, they say that 16 is the new 12, you know, and it's really a lot of websites for people that are blogging or have, uh, have content actually have, we have 18, um, we went up to 18 um, pixel font. So tell your story and stand out. You know, with a, with a customer centric, not we, 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 we do this, we do that, no. It's like, oh, are you um, having such and such a problem? Then you've come to the right place. You know, it's putting the emphasis on your target customer, which brings us back to that slide of does somebody know what you do and who is your audience right from the start. And some people say, but everybody's my audience. Well, give that up. It's like being a therapist and standing at the back door going, anybody want therapy? You know, or therapists that have like 40 different specialties. Well, if you've got 40 specialties, you might as well have none. So pick something, take a stand, be the best hypnotherapist or be the best uh, trainer, obedience trainer for agility courses or something. But pick something, pick your best thing, pick the thing that makes you the most money. And um, one of my friends has a web, web company, web, um, agency in Atlanta too, and they just launched their new website about the same time that we launched ours. And it has a lot of like, a lot of things on it, but it doesn't say, it says design and, and branding and all sorts of things, but it didn't mention the word web, web design at the top. And I said, well, why didn't you mention web design? And he says, well, because we do all of these things. I said, but what brings people to your door? Are they coming, are they calling you and saying, um, hello, I need some branding? I don't think so. Most people don't even know what branding is. It's only when their developer says, you don't have any kind of style here, we need to start with branding, that they even know what that is a lot of times. So I'm like, why wouldn't you at least put that up in your top you know, offerings? He still doesn't have it there, but you know, that's what I mean about people getting really um, I do it too. <laughs> um, sh I said, show, don't tell. Don't tell them why you're great. Show them why you're great. Have a lead op. Uh, uh, nobody's going to remember to come back to your website. So have a lead capture form of some sort with some opt-in offer so that people can't leave your, you know, you're going to tell them how to lose their belly fat in, you know, 10 minutes. So, oh, I'll have that. You know, you want something that's going to get their attention. And then, for God's sake, please send out something to those people and not just have, hello, I have a web, uh, I'm going to put you on my newsletter and never, never, never send you anything. Or even worse, I'm going to give you this opt-in offer and never send it to you because I never finished doing it. I have a client that just did that. <laughs> And then if you want, if you're a local business, make sure, sure, sure your business name and address is in text on every page of your website for Google Local Business. And um, anyway, mm -hmm. and I'm Judy Knight and I'm not finished. <laughs> but um, who wants to be my um, Vanna White and actually type the 
the uh, things into. I'll see your okay. Right. I can't type very well. But okay. And where is the list of? Um, right there. Mm. Okay. Let's see. How about? Okay, well, I'll do it. I'll do it. This can't be too hard to think and it's like pat your head and talk at the same time. Um, let's see. Is this JoJo Marshall photos? Okay, let's go back here. Whoops. There, you got a new van of white. Let's see, make it whole. Whoops. Ah. I couldn't figure out how to get there. Yeah. <laughs> the are... <laughs> Need to make it all the way up here and then. Where is it? Okay, here, let's see. Here, you can, um, you can, I know it's like crazy um, because it, otherwise it can't make it big enough. Let's see if I can make it bigger. <laughs> yeah, but I can't. Um, that's weird. What am I doing? Oh, there it is. Okay. Doesn't look like Okay, now we're working. Okay, JoJo. M A R S H A L L. I think I've got it. Thank you, though. Okay. Photos. Dot com. Drum roll. Who is Jojo Photos. Dot com? Is it Jojo Marshall? Um, is it? Yes. Do, 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 do. Here it is. Okay, JoJo Marshall Photos. Uh, you want to stand up and tell us about your business, a little bit about your business? Okay, and and so you, what kind of photo, photo, who is your target client? Um, mostly people with cars, um, people who want their cars photographed, people who want their cars photographed, I'm in the process of bleaching the front page because um, after being here yesterday, I learned that I'm not really selling myself on the home page. Right, okay. So what I would say is I would totally agree with you. And um, one of the things is that this kind of style of a, a website that's all boxed in is limiting you. If you're a photographer, oh my god, we have these big giant photos now. The ability to have like, whether it's on the entire screen or at least, you know, three quarters of the screen. and. Um, just hit them with your best shot and let them know if you want to do automobiles, if that's your specialty, if you want to do that, then say, you know, that. If you have other things like, or if you're doing website photography for car dealers, you know, photographers, by the way, have a huge market out there if you marketed yourself for web developer, you know, to do photography for websites because we need headshots, we need uh, lifestyle photos. Our biggest problem with websites is crappy photos. So that's on my secondary page. I should promote that to my company. Oh yeah, that's what I think. Your secondary page, which yeah, is under about me. About me. Oh gosh, how did I miss that? 
yeah. You're burying the lead. I also use my photos in front end web design if you would like more information, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know, instead of just focusing on cars, you know, it, you know, what do people need a car photo for? Maybe for their own, you know, there are car enthusiasts that will spend lots of money on their car photos. But really, it's a lot of car dealerships, a lot of car people. So lead with that you do, you know, you do uh, photography for websites, you know, and that you specifically focus on, you know, that you've got a specialty or make one of your big, make the big photo a picture of a great, like, a car dealership thing with, like, several cars, something really stunning. And then say, you know, the types of photos that you do as services underneath. You know, so your team photo, you know, your lifestyle photos, your product photos, your team photos, your what one stop for your uh, clients or your website needs. I'd also say, point out, I will optimize them for web for you. You know, in other words, post services like Photoshop or whatever. So they're the right size, the right shape, everything. Um, so, you know, and again, you know, the thing about the sliding thing, hit them with your best shot so that you, um, you don't have to have it sl slide all over. I did see a guy's, finally, I saw a guy's site the other day, and I, I would pull it up, but I don't remember the URL, that he was specialized in headshots, and he says it was just this, it was a nice, really big picture of, like, headshots, and he says, don't do weddings, don't do bar mitzvahs. <laughs> I do headshots and a profile pics. So, you know, if somebody's looking for something like that, that's so much more appealing than if somebody needed their headshot done, would this attract them? No, not really. But if you had, even if you had something about images for websites, you know, your lead could be a website is only as good as its photos, which is an absolutely true statement. You know, that if they have good photos, I love it. I'm doing a Alaska salmon site right now. And oh, my God, they've got great photos. And it's such a pleasure to work with somebody that has great photos. So, yeah, so that's what I'd say. You're, you know, good for you. You've got a lot of content on here and stuff. Um, make your text bigger. Um, and, uh, and really call out what is special about you. Don't be afraid. I had, have another client who's a photographer. She came to me in January, and she hadn't been working in a few years from some health problems. She was getting back into it, and I was trying to push this idea of your best bet is being a photographer for website, um, web designers and people that are doing their websites. And she was on board for a minute, and then she freaked out. And she went the safer. Oh no, I have to have it. I have to have a portfolio site because that's what everybody else has. Oh, woo, 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 woo. And um, literally like that. And um, <laughs> so we had already like even made the home page. So it's like okay, back to the drawing boards. And she says, and I I hate doing bar mitzvahs, but oh, don't you know? Now the six we were having five categories, and now we have six, and bar mitzvahs is on there again, even though she doesn't want to do them. So. Fast forward five months later, she calls me and says, you were right. And then she was the one that found Headshot Man. She said, one of my mentors, look at his site. This is exactly what you were talking about. I said, yeah. So, yeah, good for you. Funny comment. Uh-huh. Seems to be really wordy there. It's really crunch down the words. It's a lot of access and a lot of care on there. I don't have time yeah. to read all this stuff. Yeah, that's what I mean about making your, word, making your fonts bigger and less words, and be just really careful about the words that you choose. You've only got a few words that anybody's <laughs> going to read. So don't waste them. They will not read paragraphs. Took them in the first two sentences. Uh-huh. So if you're going to highlight yourself with one particular photo and everything like that, and you do want to display a portfolio, where would you put that? A call to action? or? To let people know, hey, look here. Oh, yeah. So I find, a, find a, de a design that that'll allow you to put the big one up top and then a, a call out about what you do in large, 
letters, you know, large headlines, and then the like services, the different types of photography you do, and then and then under that, uh, sign up for my uh, ten tips to making website photography that rocks, so that they sign up for the newsletter, and right under that, see my work, and you could have a grid um, of images that then if you click you know, what types, you know, maybe it has a little menu at the top and you say headshots and it, and it shows you all the headshots or, you know, photo, and if you want to see them bigger, it, you can click back to a page that has those on there. But absolutely, you want your portfolio, you want a sampling of your portfolio images on there. You just don't want to slam them with somebody at the top because I'm sorry to say, most photos look about the same. You know, it's like that's not your lead. Your lead is be personal, tell people why they should use you. And, I mean, your photos are not going to speak for yourself. That goes the same for designers, you know, designers that put all their little uh, business cards and different things they've designed all on the top. They all, if you're designing something for a country club and a this and a that, they're all going to look like mine or going to look like yours or going to look like somebody else's unless you... I don't know. There, that, that's not enough to say, for somebody to come to your site and say, wow, I want to work with them. People work with people, and so you need to stand up, stand for something, and put it out there. Okay, back to off my preach, preaching um, thing. Intelity. Intelity.com. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Intelity, that's because I can't even read. Intelity Corp. Corp.com. Now, did I spell it right? It is tiny. <laughs> it's trying. Okay, and um, what's your name? Uh, Jake. Jake, and so tell me about Intelity. Um, we're basically specifically towards hotels, we sell apps to hotels for them to be able to give to people staying there to make it so they never have to go to the front desk. Okay, I see you have it down here, but let's, let's hear from people. What do you think? Well, I don't see the word app development anywhere uh, in that first three seconds. So you do apps for hotels. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, it's, we do mobile and tablet and web. So, yeah, it's, it's basically apps. But the CEO doesn't like to call it app design. But I don't know what anyone else who wants me to call it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so is it an auto check-in? So it's an automatic check-in process? Um, that's part of it, yeah. But it's it's kind of they can check in on it. They can request um, room service amenities. Um, yeah, so, it, you know, he might, there's a, there might be a better word than apps. If he doesn't like apps, it could be software <coughs> solutions or something else. You've got to find out what he's got a problem with. But it has to, you have to use the words that somebody who's searching for those things is going to search for. And understand. And so if that, you know, whatever... But, you know, to find out what your keywords are, you know, it, he may not like apps, but if everybody who is searching for this kind of application is calling it an app, then, you know, that's one of those things I'm like, you got to get over it. It's for your customer. But I would say, like here, Ice Bedside, that completely throws me off, and I don't even see the hospitality industry thing because I'm like, I is bedside and it's making me like conjure up. I have no idea what that means. I'm thinking about like a hospital or something. <laughs> or delivering a cocktail. That too, to your room, uh, you know, whatever. So I don't think you've managed to like, the, the design is pretty. I mean, it's, it's a pleasing design. Um, guest self-service, guest engagement. 
Okay, our apps are at your service. So you mention apps and it's teeny tiny. So, but you know, like if I'm just gazing down here, I'm not really understanding it. So I think you just have, your messaging has to be really a lot clearer about who you, what your, the pain point is and transform your definition of service excellence with our award women, winning platform. You know, that doesn't really sound like, that doesn't get to the pain point. It's like, uh, you know, have, have specific uh, needs for your hospitality industry uh, automation. We're the company for you. Do you see what I mean? Um, so that's, anybody have any, any other questions you have? Yeah. I was just going to say, you know, um, the app, you know, as soon as I get to the website, I want to know exactly what it is or what it does. I'll tell you down there, but I still don't know what the app does to help. It does an immediate call to action on how to help keep. Can you scroll up again? It's better to do a call to action. Yeah. It's better to do a like that, that, that is better. It should be maybe on the top. Yep. Those pictures right there should be on the top. Yep. Yep. And that whole th new standard for guest services, yeah. even this. Yeah. This is your this is your lead. If you bury it down there, then you've maybe lost some people. So that's that's good. Uh, like the case study um, button, but you know you might want to put a couple right on the home page. I mean, on, on mine, I, I put two, you know, you've got a lot of screen real estate, so you could put like one here and one here, picture and a description. Whoa, what's happening there? Okay. Um, but see down here, I've got like, see what a difference new tricks can make because my website's talking about not just a pretty website but one that works and, you know, I mean, this is a big difference between this one, this one, and then what somebody says about working with us um, and about their websites now actually working for them, you know. <laughs> so that could be like a case study thing, but, you know, you can't really, you know, maybe somebody will push a button for case studies, but if, if that's something that whatever is going to really help sell you, whether it's case study or specific testimonial, just a list of testimonials. People go testimonial blind and they don't really look at it. But testimonials in relationship to a particular, like an event, you have an event, testimonials from people that went to the event. Or you have certain thing and specific testimonials are a good thing or case studies. Um, let's see, where did Mine is newtricks.com. Uh huh. Are top of the, top of the fold menus dead? Should you put that kind of stuff down at the bottom of the page? The menu in, in, up in here. That top area, yeah. Because do people go to menus any, anymore? Do they go two levels down? Oh now, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It tells you the menu gives you the site architecture. If you're trying to figure out what a site's about, you go to the menu. So over here. Um, and if you have a bunch of things, so people, you know, and I've seen enough usability tests of people going through things to say, oh, let me see what else they've got going on here. And this one is called a mega menu. So if you have things that have menus and submenus, I have this one. So here's three services that we, you know, three things. And then here's the pages under those that we do. And so that's another good way. But yes, menus are absolutely... Uh, you know, I didn't even know that people, that there was anybody that didn't use a menu. And one of the usability studies I've seen recently said there are people that only use a search box. Right. Uh, How about that for an... A responsive, right? The menu does go away. So the new technique really responsive is to put the items in the menu as call to actions down that home page so that you can entice them that way too if they're not on a computer. I right. Think a, there has to be a happy balance now because we're designing for multi-platform. And with responsive, you know, you do actually have a menu, but my my um, research shows a lot of people don't know that that hamburger is a menu. Yeah. They don't. They have no idea. Right. And so, you know, it does help. Actually, the biggest help, the biggest percentage of people knowing that that was it is putting that in a box. 
but but then you've got you know your menu here but yeah yeah so any other questions about that or uh-huh I'm going back to his I'm going back to his um, and to mine actually how do you feel about having like video playing whenever you open up like at the top of the of the thing when it fits I had that on there And I don't know what was your video about. It was it was kind of the picture that's there. It was um, it was somebody actually using the application, kind of showing exactly how the interface works. So I kind of thought that was cool. Yeah, probably probably not so effective in your case. This is a perfect case for it because you know, yeah, it's a little slower. Like right now, our internet's so bad, you know, it's not fast, but. But because there's not very many label makers, that mean they're going to not be annoyed by it. Um, it usually works pretty well. But having, I mean, what do you put for a label company? You know, I he know, had. I think that's perfect. He had all these little tiny pictures of labels, and they were ugly. And we we looked into like I'm like you can't make these pictures look good. So um, one of our guys found this picture for seven dollars on one of the um, stock video sites. So, um, you know, it's perfect. And then it goes on down, have a complex job, blah, blah, blah. It tells you what they specialize in. And then it says their client, you know, so it just tells the story without using one picture of a stupid label. Now the labels, I mean, they're just ugly. Um, here, Like this, the whole home page was stuff like that. I mean, there's like not a good way of really showing those things but so then don't make your home whole page home page full of it so um, yeah so I but I don't know somebody you know if it's a picture of somebody using the app you know that's not as like immediately you, it still does not let you know what you do so I think you're losing you know it, it could be um, somebody uh, at a hotel desk or something like that with your message over it or something like that but but definitely, like everybody said, the bottom messaging is much better. And so if you could take, you know, one of those, like probably of these pictures, probably a picture with a person in it. That's also much, much, much more effective than a, the photos without fo pictures. People are much more included in. So somebody doing some, you know, buddy at a front desk, you know, that's like, like look, you know, looking at their technology or helping somebody with their something like that would be great. Okay, another one. Um, AngoCreative.com. Who is AngoCreative.com? You, and what's your name? Anders. Anders. Um, so while we're waiting for it to pop up, would you like to tell us what you do? Sure. Um, I'm, I do a lot, and now I'm, I'm guessing it's, it's a bad thing. Uh, but this is a portfolio website. I I do design, web, illustration, um, and writing. So I just have everything there. Mm-hmm. You know, I want you to be bigger. You yeah. know, be bigger. And, and, you know, put yourself in the front page. You know, put yourself up here. Yeah. You're selling you. You're selling your service. Be a rock star. Take a stand. <laughs> go big or go home. Look at little, little teeny, teeny. Hi there. You know, teeny, teeny, a storyteller. I want you to tell your story about how you can help me tell my story. Um, but that's nice. I like the telling the story. At use, you know, designers. Oh, you know, this is the little, the little text, the little gray text that I have to <laughs> get up there. What do other people? I mean, it, you should see it on my computer. On here, it's like not so bad. But what do you guys think about text stuff? The menu's actually a little small. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everything's small, except for the first piece. 
Yeah, yeah, go bigger. Big, big, big. Um, yeah, so, and I like the message. But you know, you could even get that stuff off of the photo and tell the story down the page so that somebody's going, oh, 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 yeah, 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 you know? Because I'm not going to read that. Yeah, and here's what I was talking about, about a, a portfolio, which is a, this is a good way of doing, you know, showing portfolio issue, you know, portfolio items. That's cool. Wow. IRP logo, tour, even giant illustration. You did that illustration? That's beautiful. Amazing. Let's see. Will it come up? Drum roll. Now, part of this is not you, so don't. <laughs> but it, uh, part of it might be. <laughs> Optimize your image. See, we're like, would we have waited? <laughs> no, probably not. Um, but cool illustration. I mean, not everybody can do those. So that's another thing. You've got to get that out there that, you know, if you, you know, that really sets you apart. A lot of designers can do a lot of stuff, but only certain designers can do illustrations. So really um, play that up. Yeah, I mean, that's even giants get afraid, scared. Very cool. Um, okay, so do you have any other questions for us about the site or anything about it? Okay, great. Okay, let's see. Well, and red, I'm a psychologist, and red um, is also, some people get, have a really strong, like, almost post-traumatic stress reaction to a lot of red. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> Where did I pick his? Joshua? No, I just like lost it here. Joshua. Joshua Hoffman. Dot. Is it dot me? Yeah, dot me. Okay. Who's Joshua? You? Oh, no. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just stretching your hand. It's like in an auction. You bought the six foot Ganesh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have some minor nerve damage in my hand. <laughs> okay. Who, who, who's claiming this site? Okay. Stand up. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah, man. Okay. <laughs> what, what do you do, Joshua? Okay, and are you very shy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what's your strong suit? Why should somebody work with you? <laughs> what kind of projects do you like best? Uh, Pardon me? Okay, and do you have a lot of good clients in your... Um, like that you've worked for, name people. Yeah. Okay. Is anybody getting any of that from his front page? No. No. Do you want work from your website? No. <laughs> that's that, you know. I mean, I'm serious. That's an important question. Um, 
what do you want about what is your what is your goal for your website? Uh, just to show some of my work and tell people a little bit about me that's not on the internet. Okay, and so is your website? Do you get mostly referrals? And when somebody comes to you, like what kind of referrals? Like, uh, person -to -person -to like somebody says, I'm, I, who knows you, says, I need to hire you for this something or other because I'm stuck with it and I can't figure it out, and they hire you. So you don't have to even convince them that you should be their man. Okay, and that's a good, you know, and, and that is a legitimate thing. Um, however, a lot of people get mostly, uh, you know, have a strong referral base. But the statistics are something like by the time somebody comes to your website, uh, they've been shopping around or at least they've, they've come and with, a, with a strong referral some, some, of, some people don't shop around. They've just got a strong referral. But they're going to come to your website before they make a decision, at least to find your phone number. And so you have a big opportunity right there to give them something to say, yeah, I could work with her or him. And so I think you're missing it there by hiding everything. Let's go see if he's got his code in the portfolio. <laughs> I'm, I'm imagining a portfolio full of like, you know, uh, snippets. <laughs> Does it come up faster for you? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm not going to hold that against you. Yeah. So I mean, if you're happy with your results and don't want to do anything different, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, it's all about what you, um, what you want to portray and why somebody would want to hire you. And I don't really see any of that. So, I mean, my recommendation would be, like, even if you, um, even if you get a lot of work, most people have a favorite kind of work, and at least you can push the kind of work. You can use your website to get more of the kind of work that you want. You know, the better paying clients, the better, the more fun clients, the whatever. So, so um, what what did you want to know? Uh, on the list. Okay. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. It looks like the uh, sites that he's designing are contemporary sites, yeah. but I get a feel like a 70s feel from the, not 70s, but 90s feel from a uh, web page. Yeah, I wouldn't, if I had a big, you know, if I had a really, you know, big project or something, there would be nothing on here that would give me any confidence that, that I would hire Joshua unless my, you know, somebody like my, programmer friend Russell Fair, if I called him to do something that I can't do, and he said, I can't do it, but Joshua can, I'm probably not even going to go to Joshua's website. I'm going to call Joshua if Russell said you can do it. Because I know some programmers are weird. <laughs> <laughs> and shy. You know, it'd be cool is if he made an infogram on his homepage of all this stuff, and you'd have to hunt for it, and it just add it there. Because I think this is, you know, interesting things, but if you just put it all the way down the front page of an infogram or a Pinterest page. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. That would be nice just to have it be on a one-page thing instead of, because you're not actually going for SEOing. You know, the reason, one of the reasons why you wouldn't have a, you know, most people don't want a one-page website is because it's nice to have the SEO from the separate pages. But since you're obviously not going for hauling in clients through the internet, um, that wouldn't work, but I like that suggestion. Yeah, because I like some of the things I see, and if it was all on one page, we might hire them for some work. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe a little bit of words about, you know, why you love code or what kind of projects, just, just to give us some kind of ground us in um, something. A few words. Use your words. <laughs> okay. Let's see. We've got... We've got Who's having a burning issue on this, 
on this list oh, that I have. Okay, which one is yours? The first one. Network Live Virtually. Now I've spelled it wrong. Have I now? No, you had it right. Okay, virtually, two L's. Virtually.com. I also have, if you go to my website, you can sign up for my newsletter. And I used to write like WordPress tutorials and stuff, and then I realized there's a lot of WordPress tutorials. And occasionally I throw one out there, but mostly I write about UX stuff and why you're not doing what you should be doing and content marketing and things like that. But um, I send it out every Wednesday and would love to have you on the list. Okay. Do you know why it's cutting off your image? Or is, I have no idea. Never is seen that, that no. how you like it? <laughs> no. I haven't seen you do that before. I can be so mean. But you know what? I have to say that I did, when I was doing my website recently, I, I didn't know if we were going to like have the dogs on the front. And so I, I had to go put it, I had to do it in front of a meetup. I said, okay, I'm going to now let you critique my website. I was, so I, I you know, anyway, it's hard to put your stuff, stuff out here. So um, the large image thing is obviously an issue or the large screen, huh? What, that you have a large screen and I don't? No, that, yeah, no, that you do and I don't. Oh, well, this, isn't, like this is a tiny screen, so I don't know why it was cutting yeah, off. It, doesn't, it, doesn't it might have been the Internet not coming up, um, maybe cutting it off. I'm not sure. Let's go back. Is that the page we came to at the beginning? Yeah, but nothing in that slider looks right. Yeah, it's not. So this is a good thing. This yeah. is really important because she had no idea how her website looked on other devices, you know, on other people's computers. I get that all the time, and I always forget, you know, hello, I do web design, I have a team, and I'm like, could we make those words on the slider image, you know, be over a little bit? And my guys go, remember, responsive, we can't tell you. It's, they're there on my computer, they're just not there on your computer. And I always forget about that, because that's also an issue. Every single size of computer, if you've got an image and you've got the words floating on the image, they're going to be different on the where it floats is going to be different on different computers, sizes. Yeah, on your websites, do a value like that on. Stick up your post to your website, and they run it through the different variations. There is a website called Screenfly that you are able to click and see different how it look like on an iPhone, how it look like on a tablet, so on and so forth. What's it called? Screenfly? Screenfly. Screen 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 Fly. Fly. Chrome has a plugin. You can put, or an extension or a plugin you put in. It'll resize Yeah, there are a number of different ones like that that'll let you see what something looks like on different devices. But even, even on different size, um, you know, not just desktop, it'll, it'll look different. So it's really good just to have several, you know, to look at several people. It's also good to have somebody who's kind of a target user walk through your site and watch them walk through your site. So what is your um, business? I, I provide uh, virtual networking groups, a place for virtual networking groups to list their groups. Okay, business networking. But the virtual networking groups. It's about being virtual. Yeah, so you can connect locally, nationally, or internationally in live rooms with video and audio. OK, so what I would do, because that's missing, and I'm not going to spend that much time, and we build relationships, I might think I'm at Match.com. Okay. So I want you to have a big image, one, pick one, and say something like, you know, uh, let us build your virtual networking, or whatever you do, whatever it is, or are you lonely out there? <laughs> Let's join our, our virtual networking group, or whatever your, what is your main like, message like that? Like if you had the 15 second elevator speech and you're trying to, you're seeing if I'm your target audience, what would you say you could do for me? Um, I guess I would ask you if you were able to sell your products or services outside of your geographical location. And if so, then you need to be meeting people all over the world through our virtual networking groups. That's it. 
that's your message. Put that at the top. Attract the people that that's the issue for. Don't make them hunt for it. Do you guys see that? Yeah, less text, nobody's going to care. What they want to know is that, and then they want to know how much does it cost? What does it look like? And so then lead them down the page. Once you've got them, yeah, I want that. I'm interested in that. Now what are you going to get me for? Or how does this look? Or what kind of time commitment is it? Or what do I have to do? And so and those are the next questions. And so you, you get your people, and then you walk them through their objections or their questions that they would have as they're going through, and just, just very few words, as few words as you can. Other questions? How many of you guys are doing your own sites, or how many have, let's see, own sites? Yeah, I'm doing my own site, obviously. And then how many, I mean, I guess the real question is, how many people are doing sites for other people? And I can do some of that. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's really, like I said, it just takes more than having a pretty website. I, I um, you know, the, the thing about getting people to actually collect people's names so that you can follow up with them is just huge. Your mailing list is so huge. I've grown my business totally. I mean, I'd say of everything I've done, it's my mailing list. I even sold a beach house recently. This is so weird. I don't have 30,000 people on my mailing list. I sold a beach house in, in uh, Pensacola because I'm afraid of global warming, and it already blew away once, and I don't think anybody should have Gulf Front property. Um, so I, was, <laughs> I got rid of it. And the guy that bought it is in Arkansas. I never met him. I didn't even have to go to the closing. We're talking about how to change the utilities and, you know, had a nice conversation. The next Wednesday morning, he calls me and says, oh, my God, I thought your name was familiar. I read your newsletter. He lives in Arkansas. He has two. I said, why do you read my newsletter? He said, I have two car dealerships, and I like what you talk about about online marketing. And I mean, I have, you know, I get clients from all over because they find me th through that. And so, you know, I just want to say for you all, because so few people do it, that you have a leg up. If you do it and do it regularly, people think you're, you know, that they can know, they know that you can make a commitment <laughs> and they know that you have something good to say. So for you and for your clients, you know. Um, that is, I think, one of the most important things, because people will come to your website. They might love your website, but it's late at night, and they're not ready to call you, and they don't want to go to your contact form, and then they say, I'm going to come back to that when I have time. And guess what? Have you ever tried to find a website that you loved, and you can't find it again? So, but if you love it, if I love it, I will sign up for their newsletter so, I can, so, they'll, so I'll remember them. And um, that is like essential. So that's my, my that's what I got. Thank you. That was awesome.